Hi everybody and welcome to Permaculture Malaga. First I'll start by excusing that there's been some very infrequent updates recently and I promise you I'll try to keep the videos posted more frequently. Uh, it's been partially because we've had no real internet connection here and we have that now. Uh, but partly also because we've had so much to do that we simply, I simply haven't had the time to, to make the videos. I'm sorry for that. Um, so, the topic of today is uh, dirt or soil, which is the proper name for that. Um, the funny thing is, when, uh, when we arrived here at the Finca, um, our first concern was water. Is there enough water? Can we get enough water? Can we get anything to grow here? And as I've shown in a previous video, uh, we do get a lot of water here. It's just very, very irregular, even though it has a, um, a seven-year cycle. Um, but after we've lived here for a while, the thing I've noticed most is that the water isn't the problem. The water is, even though it's causing erosion, and it's, it's not there when you need it. Uh, the real problem on this site is the soil, or rather the lack thereof. Um, the, uh, water comes second. Because if the soil is fixed, water can infiltrate, uh, plants can grow much better, there won't be as much erosion from the water, and so on. So, so the real problem here on this side is soil. Um, and I want to show you actually how bad that actually is here. Come take a look. This olive tree here is probably around 40 years old and so are all the olive trees here they were planted about 40 years ago and it looks nice and big and green but take a look here at the roots let's get in closer and see can you see what's missing Used to be here. Now it's there. And that's 40 years. 40 years. It's literally standing on its roots. That's how much soil has been lost here in just 40 years. And if you generally look around the landscape, you see this everywhere. And there's missing at least a meter or two meters of soil. Um, and I can show you how I know that in a second. But before we move on to the subject, I just want to give you some updates. Here. We've been building terraces, and we're finished with the lower layer. We started to build the second terrace, and we've also started planting it. We've also got some chickens.
and we've had some volunteers here, so let's go meet them. So these are our two volunteers. Yes. Three, Three actually four. Four. But the last one is not here. But there's their little baby. Yeah. yeah. What's the baby called? Saka. Yeah, that's right. And the little girl? Lola. Yeah. And you are? I'm Helena. I'm Andre. And how did you find us here in Spain? Uh, I think I read about you on a, a baby wearing form. I read about Dawn's adventures here. And uh, I told Andre about it. And he said, I'll try to write to them and, and see if we can come and visit. <laughs> because we've been interested in permaculture and, and yeah, growing our own vegetables and all this. And so I just wrote a message and she responded actually immediately <laughs> saying, yeah, just come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and how's it been being here? It's been really nice. It's, it's a beautiful area and the kids have been playing out in the, in the mountains every day. And yeah, it's been really, really fun for them. Yeah. And of course, the house isn't really done yet, so no, it's, <laughs> it's been a little bit, uh, yeah, interesting cooking and uh, cleaning up after so many people <laughs> in this non-existent kitchen. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. Yeah. And what are your plans after you've been here? Do you um, have any plans? Long, long-term plans, uh, we don't know, <laughs> but yeah. We're going, uh, yeah, probably to Granada, some other place in Spain. We're not sure about that either, but yeah, we're basically just sort of traveling around. Yeah, we have a, about three months in Spain, give or take. Um, yeah, no specific plans really, just uh, <laughs> taking it easy. Maybe we'll try and find some other um, permaculture places or farm space or yeah, whatever you call them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, basically taking one day or one week at a time. Yeah, that's also a good idea, I think. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, it's been really nice having you here. Yes. Uh, I hope the kids have enjoyed it too. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah, it's been great, especially for Luna with the. Uh, so I guess, well, she's enjoyed it, but He's Luna's been able to run around and play a lot. And that's yeah. He's really great. Yeah. And maybe we'll see each other again sometime. Yeah. yeah. You're always welcome. And next we'll, time we'll probably yeah. have a real kitchen. <laughs> a big. One. Yeah, we'll we'll keep up to date on your. So let's move on to today's topic, which is soil. Um, I'm not going to go into very much detail regarding soil because it's a massive subject and it has several different sciences behind it. You can be get a master's degree in all kinds of soil sciences. So this is just going to be a brief overview for what you need for your site analysis. Um, we're going to look at the layers of the soil, the major structure, and the composition of the soil. Uh, what's your soil made of? Um, so let's take a look at our layers. Um, I have this nice little figure here, which shows the layers quite well. Um, The different layers in the soil are called horizons, uh, primarily. Some people call them stratums, some people call them layers. I think horizon is the the proper scientific word for them. Um, The soil builds from the bottom up but it also builds from the top down. So 
you get um, soil creation from the bottom where the, the, the bedrock underneath is, is um, decomposed and turned into soil and you get soil creation from the top from um, organic matter coming down onto the soil and this creates some uh, distinctive layers in the soil. Um, if we start from the top, you can see the top layer is marked O. Um, and this is some, some people mark it OM. Uh, it's organic material. Um, organic material is, yeah, what you expect. Dead leaves, um, animal droppings, you know, dead rabbits, uh, whatever. Um, organic material. Um, and this is the top layer of the soil. Now, what's not shown in this uh, figure here is there is a layer between the O layer and the A layer, uh, sometimes called the P layer. Um, and this is humus, uh, which is one of the most important components of soil. Uh, it, if you're a bit like me, you you might be thinking, what is humus exactly? Because I did not actually get what humus was and what's the difference between humus, organic material, compost, you know, what, what's the difference? So uh, let me explain, um, as far as I understand it anyways. Uh, humus is organic material that is stable in the sense that it doesn't decompose anymore. So, uh, in comparison to the organic material on top, which is dead leaves or a dead rabbit or whatever, that's decomposing. That's uh, getting broken down by bacteria, by fungi, by uh, plants, uh, all the soil activity. It, it's, it's decomposing. And at some point, and, and, it, and it's recycled many times, there's, there's a whole lot of interesting... Uh, literature on, on soil activity and, and it's amazing how much is going on just in that top layer. Um, and at some point this stuff doesn't get broken down anymore. Um, it, it stays the way it is uh, as humus. And that means it's stable. Um, and it will stay in that, uh, that state for years, millennia, um, and this is this is the fluffy kind of um, stuff that plants like to grow in because it get, gives them air, it give it lets the water uh, penetrate, but it also has drainage and it can also hold water. And it has a lot of good properties. Uh, so this is the stuff you want <laughs> in your soil, um, and that's almost better. It's a very very thin layer usually. Um, but it's right there under the old layer. Um, the next layer you get is the A layer or A horizon. Um, and this is the layer where the top, the, the soil produced from the top, which is from the organic material, gets mixed with the soil produced from the bottom, uh, from the bedrock, which is mainly minerals. Uh, so this is a layer of mixing. This is a layer of um, of orga partly organic material, partly minerals. But minerals are at this state uh, dissolved uh, and broken down uh, so that you can no longer recognize them as any parent material from the bedrock. They are literally minerals. And, and, and this OP and A layer is what we refer to when we talk about topsoil. This, this is what your plants grow in. This is what they want, this is what they need. Um, the rest of it is subsoil. And, and this is very valuable material, so if you're excavating anywhere, digging a pond, whatever, um, save this material, because this is created from the top, this is what you want, this is the most important material, this is what your plants can grow in. Once you move further down, uh, you go to... Um, sorry, that's a fly. <laughs> uh, you, you get to the B layer, uh, the B layer is dissolved, almost dissolved parent material. Um, 
in the form of small rocks, uh, minerals, and so on. Um, it can contain a little bit of organic material, but, but it's mainly very dissolved, but not completely uh, parent material, so it ha it's, it's rocky material. Um, and as we move down to the sea layer, this is, this is parent rock. This is not bedrock yet, but, but we're talking big chunks of rock where you can pick them up and, and easily recognize where they came from and what kind of uh, bedrock is underneath. And at the very bottom, you have bedrock, which is Mother Earth. This is, that's as far as we can go, well, as far as we're going to go uh, in soil. Um, so you have bedrock dissolving upwards, and you have organic material dissolving downwards. Uh, and this is what we call soil. Now, soil, if you look uh, at the, the A, B, and C layers, and uh, not the organic layer, they're mainly made up of three components. Um, and this is the composition of soil. They're made up of sand, silt, and clay. And you can have a look at this. Um, I know these are sometimes difficult to read. Uh, but this is how we describe how science describes uh, different so soil compositions. Um, you have a mixture of sand, silt, and clay. Uh, if you go to any one corner, you go to a hundred percent of either clay, silt, or sand, and none of the others. So anywhere in this graph will give you a hundred percent material in some composition. Now these are the names for different kinds of. Um, compositions um, and again there's a lot of science and there's a lot of words and if you can use the right words that's really great for a site analysis but you can also just use what you the words you uh, you're comfortable with um, to describe what you're seeing now sand silt and clay are, are the dissolved minerals from the bedrock um, and the difference is mainly in size. Uh, sand is the biggest material and clay is the smallest material. Uh, silt is in between. Um, sand, obviously you know that when you go from to the beach. Um, clay, most people know what clay is, how it feels. Uh, and silt is in between the two in size, in terms of size of the grains. Now people think of sand as very small, but clay is actually incredibly sm much smaller. To give you a comparison, um, a grain of clay, if it's the size of a marble, then a grain of sand would be the size of two basketballs. That's, that's the difference in size we're looking at here. And it's funny, but that size difference gives different properties. Um, sand, if you pour water on it, it really has a bad retention. It just runs straight through. Whereas if you form something out of clay and you pour water on it, it's going to sit. It's not going to drain. Um, so the size of the... And there's a whole lot of other uh, properties that change just simply by the size of, of, the, of the grains, which, by the way, are called... Heads, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, and there again, there's a whole science behind <laughs> behind all of this, uh, which I'm not going to go into because this is for the site analysis. Um, so let's go out and have a look at some soil. For your site analysis, you need to describe the soils and the land you're analyzing. Um, and this doesn't have to be extremely complicated. You can go out and you can look at the soils and you can describe them in your own words. This doesn't have to be a technical description. You could say they're sandy. You could say they're clay. You could say they're hard. You could say they're soft. You could say they're uh, waterlogged. You can say they're barren, like this in front of me here. You can see, say they're vegetated. You can say they're rocky. Um, you
you can describe all, all, all the words you can think of to describe the soil, uh, you can use that. And, and do it as good as you can. You don't need to be an expert in soils to be able to analyze what you have. Um, you can look at things like uh, the porosity, like how good does water drain off the soil. Uh, you can look at a lot of things. Um, and the thing you can also do is you can make a soil sand. A soil sample is very easy to make. Uh, you dig down like this much, straight down, take some soil out, put it in a big jar, fill it with water, shake it, and let it rest. And I'll show you how that looks like when it's settled. When you've done your soil samples and they have settled, this is what they will look like. Let's take a closer look. The soil will settle out with the heaviest particles on the bottom and the lightest particles on the top. So that's sand at the bottom and clay materials on the top. Above that, you will have the humus, which is the stuff lying on top of the soil. And what's floating around at the top of the water is the organic material up here. And you can have a look and see that these two soil samples are very different. The one on the left is much more sandy than the one on the right which is much more clay, and these have been taken from two different sites on the property. And you can clearly see the layers dividing them. So let's put it into the site analysis. What you want to mark in here is where you're taking your samples. I've marked that in with two green dots here, one here and one here. Obviously, um, two samples like this aren't representative for the entire area, so you should take as many samples as you find necessary. Um, and then mark the area that's represented by the soil sample. You can see the top area, which is thinly striped here, um, is the more sandy soil, whereas the bottom area here is the more clayey soil. Now I've been around checking that, and, and also it's quite easy to see when you're standing on the opposite uh, side of the, the valley here, uh, and looking over the land, you can simply see a, a complete difference in coloration. Uh, the top part is, is much more uh, gray in its tone, and the bottom part here is much more red. Now, in the paper you're accompanying with your site analysis, you describe with your own words or with the scientific words, if you know them and understand them, what the different soil samples are. You can mark them one, two, three, four, and say this is this kind of soil, this is that kind of soil, uh, and so on. But generally, you should know what different kinds of soils are on your site analysis. So that concludes this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you'll watch again on the next episode.